everybody it's kelly russell the rock your joy coach thank you so much for being with me today and welcome to my channel so my topic for this week is it's a very common misperception that we have in this world and i i particularly as a a coach and probably more so as a therapist i i see this idea uh, in in my clients that I talk to that the past and the present and the future are all related and that they are continuous and it's false you know that idea we we sort of set our lives up by that idea and that what has happened in the past was real that's mistake number one, that it was real and that the past then dictates what is going to happen in the future. And so that everything that is happening now is happening now as determined by something that happened in the past. And so if you follow that through to its sort of natural conclusion, and when I say natural, because we, we think this is natural, we think this is the way that things are. But if you if you think like that, then you absolutely cannot help but hold people in guilt and blame and responsible because whatever they did in the past is causing whatever is going on in the present, right? And then it plays out that whatever is happening right now is then going to play itself out in the future and what's happening right now is a result of the past and so our past is creating what's happening right now and our past is then going to create our future because because it determines it's determined what's happening right now and so then of course it's going to determine what's going to continue to happen and it's really disheartening to have that mindset because then it, it's so, you know, you're disempowered when you think about the fact that it's sort of like, well, then you can't really do anything about anything because everything has to do with something that already happened and the, we can't exert any will on it. And and that's the absolutely the ego's reasoning, what I'm called reasoning, <laughs> of 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 why that perception exists because then oh nothing's nothing's our fault and nothing is our responsibility and we don't have any ownership or any investment in anything because it all already happened and it already happened to us and it happened to me and so my future was just predetermined and so that's what it is and I'm a victim of it and I will then be a victim of whatever the future is that is happening as a result of what I'm doing and thinking and creating right now because I can't help it because it was all pre-programmed already. So it's a it's a really powerless way to look at, at everything and it plays right into the ego's hands. And and so how can we do that differently? And what what really is the truth? So what the truth really is, okay, is first of all, Again, this whole thing, if you're a Course in Miracles student, this whole idea of the world of form and perception is, it's an illusion, okay? So first of all, anything that happened in the past, not only is it over, but so to, to think that it's real, to think that it, it, it exists now, it's delusional because it's over for one thing, so it's not happening now and it also is existing is existing as a kind of a microcosm in a, an illusion okay so it's like an illusion within an illusion and so the only power that the past has to dictate what is going on in our present is the power that we give it that we assign to it that we believe in and say oh because this or that happened i can't do this or I can't have that or I can't I can't you know I can't achieve this or I can't be what I'd like to be in the world you know it's we look at it at the past as something that is capable of holding us back and the past 
doesn't have that kind of power. The only power that exists in the world to hold you back from anything is in your mind. So it's not the past. It's your belief in the past, your, your belief in whatever went down and your belief that it has power and then it will. It's, that's, it's as simple as that, is it doesn't have power until you breathe life into it, until you tell it it has power, until you program your own mind and then that's what happens in your future. So it's not that the future is predestined or pre-programmed other than how you are programming it yourself with your thoughts and your beliefs. And so if you don't like what is happening in the present, if you're not enjoying yourself, if you're not rocking your joys, I like to say, if, if you're not you know, you're not down with what's going on in your relationships or you're not loving what's happening in the environment of your life, whatever part of it is, you know, we have all these different areas of our lives. We have all of our different relationships that we have. We have our work in the world. We have our health and the state of our bodies. We have what we do, uh, what we do for fun, what we do for enjoyment and recreation. We have, you know, our interests and our hobbies and our activities and and what we stand for and our politics and what we put our energy towards and how we spend our money and how we manage our lives. All of those things are not predetermined. There are, nothing is predetermined ex except our belief. And so the biggest, hugest, most colossal example of this is that a long, long, long time ago in a galaxy far, far away, we believed that we separated from God, right? We had this, we had this nanosecond little tiny mad idea moment where we thought, I wonder what it would be like to be on my own. And we ended up, I don't even want to say creating because creation really has to do with love. This was really making something out of fear. We literally made up in that moment the world of time and space. Okay, we did that with our thoughts. There was nothing in the past that made that happen. The only, the only thing that made that happen was a, a present thought about what would it be like to be separate from God. And then we had the experience of it. It didn't really happen. It isn't really happening now. It never could happen. You can't be separate from something that you actually are a part of, but we believe that that's what's hap what happened. And so we think that something in the past, you know, our separating from God, because we think we really did that, created this everything that we experience that's difficult in the world, you know, um, attack and a sense of isolation, separateness, loneliness, conflict, despair, depression, anxiety, all that stuff. When really it was created, it was made rather by a thought, by an erroneous thought, a thought of guilt, a thought of that we rejected God, which we never did. So it was, this literally was, was an experience. This whole world of time and space is an, an existence. It's an experience that was made up by a thought that we had and we have carried it and we continue to have it. And so as we continue to have it, it keeps dictating the future that we seem to have. But it's not because of anything that really happened. It's because we keep choosing to have that thought. We keep choosing that as our reality. And so that is our our experience in the in the world itself of our lifetimes works the same way. It's like a microcosm. So we we think that something happened in our childhood. We think that we, we believe that we were abused. We believe that we were mistreated. We believe that we have trauma. We believe that we, that someone was responsible. Somebody did or didn't treat us the way that we should have been treated or they neglected us or, 
you know, what, whatever we are holding people and circumstances in our past for doing, that's what's causing us to have the difficulty that we have in the present is our belief our belief in it, our belief that it's alive, that it's alive in us, our belief that it somehow fucked us up in some way, that it caused us to have some kind of problems. And I can guarantee you in, in the practices that I have, whether it is in psychotherapy or it's in coaching, when I, you know, the, the story that I draw out of people it, 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 almost immediately is a story of, I'm this way because of someone else. And even when I start to say, okay, well, what are you believing? What, what, that's, that's how I do my work is identifying the erroneous false beliefs that people are carrying that are self-limiting, that are causing them to have whatever problems that they have in their lives and that they're assigning it to some other reason, somebody else. But in flushing out what those beliefs are, People will say, oh, I, well, I have this belief because of this or that thing that happened to me, person that did this to me, whatever it was. And there's very little understanding that you have those beliefs because you, you chose to believe them. Now, when we're very young, when we're children, we accept things to be true as if we're like sponges, right? So we take things in, in the world. That's, that's how our brains in these bodies work is we just kind of suck up everything and, you know, swallow it all as fact. And, and that's just what we do. But as we, as we get older in this world of time and space and our brains develop and we have the ability to think in a more abstract way, we can look and say, okay, wait a minute, what, what am I believing? And why am I believing that? And if the reason I'm believing that has anything to do with anything that I think happened to me prior to me choosing to think that this moment, it's erroneous, it's false, it doesn't exist, except that, I'm, that we're choosing it in this moment. And so there's a, there's a hell of a lot of power in this to be able to, to change your circumstances, to transform your relationships, to enjoy a, a better life for yourself, to literally create miracles in the life that you're experiencing because you, because you can choose a different thought right in this moment. And the only thing that makes it difficult is that we're habituated, we're conditioned. This is, you know, we're used to thinking, our minds are used to thinking in a particular way. We're used to coming from a place of fear. We're used to seeing the past as creating the present. And then the present is creating the future, which will, because the present right now will be the past, you know, one minute from now, right? And so we're used to thinking that things roll in a linear way, but they don't. And so we can decide that that's not the case for us. We can decide that we're unavailable for that belief system anymore. We can make the choice that what we're actually gonna do is create a different future for ourselves based on having different thoughts. And so, and that's literally how it works. That's what the truth is. There's just this huge misperception. It's like everybody believing that the world is flat and meaning no disrespect to the flat worlders out there, but it's like believing, you know, in the in the old ancient ways of, you know, where the the earth was supposedly the center of our solar system and you could literally be put to death if you said that it was otherwise, right? And so and it took a long time for people to get their heads around the fact once, you know, the scientists of the time um were you know, they were talking about it. I mean, you know, those who survived were able to talk about it, but it took hundreds of years for people to really get their minds around that. And the same thing with the world being, the earth being round as opposed to flat. So this is another one of those perceptions, you know, it's, it's, we're not, we're not coming from Newtonian physics anymore. We're coming from quantum physics. So we're coming, we're not coming from a 
cause and if then cause and effect we're coming from a we our consciousness is causing whatever to be true in every moment and if we change our consciousness the matter itself the electrons and the neutrons and the the subatomic particles literally change depending on how the researcher, how the observer is thinking toward them. They act like a particle or they act like a wave. And so if you are looking at your life and you are thinking any thoughts about the reason why things are the way they are now and you are tying them to anything that occurred in the past as being causative, that's your intervention point. That's the place where you can change the trajectory of what your experience is. And it can happen at any time. It can happen right now for you. So if you're looking at your life and you're looking at a particular circumstance, or you might be looking at all your circumstances or uh, a lot of them and not loving on what you're seeing, the great news about this is that you are empowered to change it by deciding to change your thoughts about it, deciding to, to cut the ties between yourself and any idea that the past has caused any of this to happen, that anything about the past has caused this to happen except your belief in it, except you giving the energy to it and thinking that it does and deciding in this moment to pull your energy back from that to and to look at what am I believing right now and sometimes it's helpful to write this down in a journal to to look at what's happening in my life right now what am I assigning to it as the why as the as the causative um the causative factor and then to say what if that's not true what if that's complete bullshit? What if I just thought that was the way that it happened? And that actually there's no truth to that whatsoever. And the only thing that is keeping this true in my life is the fact that I have believed in it for however long that I have, whether I believed in it my whole life, whether I believed in it because of something that I experienced happening to me at some point in my in my later life, in my teens, my twenties, or my my you know my later life, or whatever it was, whether well, it's something that happened to me yesterday, and I developed this belief because of that, and I can decide that thing that happened has no power over me. That thing that happened is in the past. It does not exist. It has dissolved. It's it only exists in my memory and my keeping it alive. And I'm going to choose to think a new thought about it. And this is called reframing. And I like to think about it, you know, the the sort of little jingle that I that I talk about is is reframing is reclaiming. Right? Because as you reframe those thoughts, as you choose a different thought that feels better to you, a thought that comes from a place of love instead of a place of fear, a thought that gives you hope that opens up a, a more positive viewpoint for you to makes you that makes you think more joyfully about what could be yours in the future what kind of what could your relationship be like you know what could a partnership be like for you what could that experience be in your in your mind of what you would love to to have it be like what would that be like what would it be like to have the work that you would love to have, to have the job you would love to have? What would it be like to have the money that you would like to have, the body you would like to have, the health, the just the fun and the friends and the experiences and the adventures and the travel and the whatever it is? What would that be like for you if the past was not a factor? if there was no power, if there was no determinant from it, and you just were starting with whatever I think about today is going to be what determines 
what I live in my future and what I live in my future starting with one second from right now. So it doesn't have to be, oh, I start changing my mind and I start changing my thoughts today and then I have to wait, you know, 17 years before I see the fruits of it. No, we see the fruits of it the, the minute we start changing our thoughts. And so that's really my message for you today is that you can change your life by changing your mind. And it is as simple as that. And it works. And I, 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 I can tell you because I'm living proof of it. I'm living proof of how my life is so different because of the myriad of thoughts that I have changed. And the things about my life that I feel like suck and that I don't like and that I don't want and I don't enjoy <laughs> are, are happening because I'm still giving life to them. I'm still believing them and I'm still holding those thoughts in my mind. So I'm a work in progress, but uh, it's, it's, I've seen it work enough times in my own life and in the lives of the people that I coach and the people that I do therapy with that I, that I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that it's true. And the Course in Miracles backs me up on it. Um, there are many places in Course in Miracles where it talks about the past does not create the future. The past is over. It can touch me not is one of the lessons. Uh, there is a part in chapter 13, um, chapter 13, uh, part seven called finding the present part seven, part six called finding the present that talks about it as well. You know, the truths in A Course in Miracles aren't just found in one place. It, it's a hologram. It's like the truth is found on repeated on every page. And so as you're reading it, as you're doing the lessons, you're going to find this to be one of the central teachings is that we are cre literally creating our reality with our thoughts and that we can choose the ego's thought system and create a reality that is based in guilt and fear, in which case it's not really creating anything. It's really making it up. But um, or we can choose those thoughts of love, those thoughts of being empowered with every quality of the creator that we have. That's what you have to remember is that we are extensions of God. And as extensions of God, we are as creative as God is. We are a thought in the mind of God. That's how God created us. And we create whatever we experience with the thoughts that we have. And the only thoughts that we have that are real and that are lasting and are forever and are truly creative are the thoughts that we have of love. And so when you're looking at your life, when you're looking at your brothers, when you're looking at what you want to see differently, you don't, you don't look at it with condemnation and resentment and anger and jealousy and lack of love and limitation and scarcity and I don't like it this way and this isn't fair and I don't want you know I hate this and it shouldn't be like this no you have gratitude for everything in your life that has been part of your life up to now and you have gratitude for everyone in your life that has been a part of your journey you wish everybody well, you bless everyone. If you're holding grievances, you forgive them. You forgive them for part of the illusion that you're believing in. You let them go. You release anything that doesn't feel good to you. I, I heard a wonderful um, quote last week that whenever you don't feel good, it's because you're believing something that isn't true. And so your past isn't true. And if you're not feeling good and you're connecting it to your past, it's because your past isn't true and you're believing in something that literally isn't true, doesn't exist. And so again, you can choose differently. Choose once again, as it says in A Course in Miracles, my brother, choose again. And so I hope this was helpful for you. I suggest that you take this moment and begin changing anything in your life that doesn't feel good to you, to think a new thought about it, to reframe in order to reclaim. And 
If you like this message, please share it. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you're not already. I'm here on a regular basis talking about the practical application to our lives of A Course in Miracles. And there is a free workshop. There's a button below that you can click on to um, check out. It's a two hour free workshop on um, how to be happy no matter what. It's from blocking joy to rocking joy. And it, and it includes some of the principles that I'm talking about right now. So thanks again for joining me. I love you so much. I'll see you next time.